Well, what a treat uh, to have Tom Grew reading the Bible at this time in the morning. I have in the past been tasked with waking Tom Grew up in his house, and it was a marathon. I'll just say that. Um, so thank you, Tom. So good to read God's Word together. So good to be getting stuck into this narrative, this story um, from Ruth. And, and the title we're giving it is Faith in Unfamiliar Times. Really poignant to be to be looking at that at the moment. I wonder how your times are, whether it feels familiar, unfamiliar. Uh, there's, it feels like there's all sorts in the Baker household that are unfamiliar. Every, every week seems like it's different and it's hard to tell whether we've had a good week or a bad week. Um, but we're, we're making the most of it uh, and being glad and thankful at different points. So just a reminder, um, Andrew was talking about Naomi's journey last week, a journey away from God, back to God, journey to Moab and back to, to Bethlehem. Um, and just just as we, we had a lovely time in our life group just wrestling with some of some of that. Um, I hope you've got uh, a life group. I hope you've got people around you that you can wrestle through um, the word of God with. It's so rich to hear other people's perspectives. The story of Ruth is quite unique as a as a book in that we, we have a challenge. It's a narrative. Uh, so often we read different parts of the Bible um, as if they're all supposed to be prescriptive. Um, whereas this is descriptive, it's describing a story. So we have to be careful when we're looking at the Bible about what it is that we get from it. Because this is a story, it's almost like a parable. God can use it to say a number of different things, uh, but we could also uh, try and make it say the things that we want to. So we just have to be mindful uh, that this is describing a story. Um, and we have to pray that God would shine his light through it for us today. And I love that the context is in many ways very similar so we have our characters here naomi and, and ruth are all that's left we have had some other characters uh, elimelech died we had um marlon kilion died and then there was orpah who decided to stay back in moab but these two are the ones who returned from moab back to naomi's hometown of bethlehem a foreign place for ruth and the story, the protagonist, the main protagonist in this book of Ruth is indeed the other, the foreigner in this story, the foreigner. Um, I wonder what that has to say to us in these times. Well, let's get stuck into it. Ruth has woken up into a dire situation. She's in a country that she doesn't know. She's got a history of grief with so much death in their family, apart from all that she would know in Moab and in this new and unfamiliar space. I wonder if you've got grief that you're processing still. I wonder if this unfamiliar space is unsettling for you. We know that Naomi is in a place of despair. She comes back, uh, as we read last week, she comes back to her town's people, to the people that she knew and said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, call me Bitter. I am bitter. And her perspective is that it, she, she's blaming God. She's, she's looking to God as the, the one to blame. And her relationship with God doesn't seem like it's in a strong point. I wonder whether you are despairing in all that you're navigating at the moment or whether you have a godly determination. There's so much that we could say we don't know at the moment, but there are some truths to hold on to, to rescue us from the despair that will help us to, to bring a determination. And, and at, right at the start of this passage, we have uh, the surprising introduction of this character, Boaz. Uh, he looked a little bit like that, apparently, if you look at the original Hebrew. Um, so Boaz here comes into the frame. What's surprising is Naomi doesn't seem to have mentioned Boaz or remembered Boaz. It's amazing what we can forget in times of despair. And I encourage you to be a person who is determined to remember stuff of God, even in those moments when you are feeling stretched or under pressure. What do you know of God? And interestingly, Ruth, though she is from Moab, there is something that she does know. And that is some of the law around gleaning and harvesting. Uh, as Tom read, um, we see that Ruth says from, uh, from this verse, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find 
favor. And actually, that comes from Deuteronomy 24. Just going to read a little bit. When you are harvesting in your field, this is verse 19, and you oh, uh, in your field and you overlook a sheaf, do not go back to it. Leave it for the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. So there's a concern right at the at the heart of the law around the fatherless and the widow. They would have been uniquely vulnerable uh, as not being able to inherit land. In a patriarchal society, these women are very vulnerable. And so, but there is something that Ruth knows and she acts from what she does know. There is opportunity for her to find food in this desperate situation. So even in our despair, I wonder if we could be reminded of what we do know of him and begin to act on that. That's something that I love about Ruth in this chapter. But actually, as we explore, and we don't have loads of time to go into this, but as we explore what happens in this fascinating passage, I love this story, is that Ruth sows, that Ruth reaps in chapter two what she had sown in chapter one. Ruth is reaping in chapter two what she sown in chapter one. We see this all the way through. Actually, people in this area, and we find that a little bit later in chapter three as well, people had heard, the townspeople had heard about Naomi, had heard about what had happened, and had heard about this Moabite woman, this Ruth, who had shown such loyalty and risked a lot to come back with her. And that was remarkable. It was remarkable. And there's a part of this story, this whole story revolves around this concern for the poor, concern for the vulnerable. And the story sets out how God blesses those who are concerned for the poor, who put a priority on the other. Ruth gets blessed in doing that. Boaz, we'll see later on in the story, is blessed because he is concerned for the poor. Let's have a little look at this character of Boaz. He comes from the town to his field and uh, I love his first line on this. His first uh, line is, is this, the Lord be with you. He just, he walks into this space, his field, and he, he speaks a blessing. How about that for your morning at work? First thing that you say on your Zoom meeting Monday, the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. What uh, an unfamiliar thing that would be for us to say. And yet there's something about um, about Boaz's worship and work that are married. These are not two separate things for Boaz. I wonder what your work is, whether it's in home and how you look after your family or elderly relatives, whether it's um, employment, what your work is. I hope that your work is married well to your worship like it was for Boaz. It wasn't enough for him to know that the harvest is going on. He wants to be there involved uh, and he wants to be making sure that it's in line with his worship. And he doesn't just stick to the letter of the law in the way that he treats Ruth. He's, he's got the spirit of the law behind it. He's got the concern for the poor and this person that he sees in his field who is foreign marginalized and would be vulnerable in a situation he wants to make sure in his sphere of influence that that is something that he can he can have a difference on i wonder where the people of vulnerability are around you maybe actually if you were honest you don't find yourself in proximity with those people that often maybe there's a challenge for us today and there's certainly a challenge for us as a church but what does it look like to create a field a space in which the vulnerable in our community can find hope and find themselves with dignity, not just easy handouts, but with dignity around how they can find social transformation. Uh, some of you might know um, part of my role here at Trinity Cheltenham is to oversee our transform ministries. Um, we, uh, we work to minister to those who are marginalized, who are vulnerable, who are in tough situations, some of them are homeless, uh, but not all. Some of them don't have food to eat, but not all. Some of them just don't have anyone to eat food with. 
at the moment we're limited to uh, as you'll have seen on some of the, the videos that we've done um, you can see that on the website if you've missed it we're limited to doing takeaways we don't get that same richness of community and that closeness of listening to someone's story but there's something here of Ruth's story that Boaz gets to hear in our passage whose stories do you get to, to listen to and have you created a field in which the vulnerable can be blessed I would love for you to be praying for us we are currently reviewing our transformed strategy not because of COVID we'd started that already I'd love for you to be praying as a church about God how do you want us to position ourselves what does it look like for us to create a field in which people can come and find dignity and transformation and rescue because our God is about rescue and we as a church want to be prioritizing the vulnerable the marginalized we want to be doing the Ruth chapter 2 stuff of saying this is important and there'll be many people in our communities at the moment who are in stuck situations financially more stressed maybe family dynamics more stressed how can we position ourselves so there's a field maybe we call it the Trinity Cheltenham's field have we got a field where the vulnerable can come and can find themselves looked after and protected and nourished into new life as I see Jesus doing that all the time so question about our field question about our field in that um, I also want to, just to explore this word favor this word favor comes up quite a few times in this chapter in verse 2 let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor uh the mention of finding favor in bars how, how have i found favor in you why would you notice me a foreigner we talked about um what i love we didn't get to read it um uh in this latter section of chapter two um ruth who is in this vulnerable spot herself ends up taking home what would have been the equivalent of about 10 adult sized portions 10 days of 10 adult sized portions of food that she's able to take back to Naomi, uh, the, the widow. Two widows, two vulnerable people, actually, because of the favor that was found, able to minister to people. Now, you might feel like you don't have much to give when it comes to um, ministering to the vulnerable, the marginalized. Well, I, I know it to be true for myself. We cannot minister powerfully unless we have first been ministered powerfully to we need to be we need to be knowing the favor of god on our lives in order to minister and there's a picture here of this ruth character ministering to naomi both in vulnerability but they're able to do it because of the favor that they have found and so my question to you this morning is not only about your field personally where have you got uh, space and place for people to find grace to find an empowerment um, but also where are you getting your favor from where are those places where you found favor now it may be that Ruth tried a couple of different fields and didn't find favor in different places but she she came to Boaz's field and Boaz comes and blesses and creates space around for Ruth to be blessed and gives her more read on in the chapter study it in your life group gives even more gives us some roasted grain, some cooked food, not just the, the sheaves that she's able to pick. She goes away blessed <clears throat> and is able to bring a blessing to Naomi. I would love for us as church, a group of individuals, but also corporately, I would love for us to be finding those areas where God has given us favor, where we have been blessed in order that we look to our wider community and are able to be good news not just a declaration of who Jesus is that is essential but also we're able to get into the dark places of society get into the broken places get into the hungry stomachs of our of our town of this um, area and say there's something that we've found in God there's a favor that we've found and we want to connect with you and we want to advance this to you 
this is such a rich passage. I wonder who you might associate with. Maybe you are challenged this morning about being a Boaz. Maybe it's your heart to be that that person whose whose work connects well with their worship. There's a connection. Maybe you have to ask God some questions around what you feel like you have to hide away when it comes to your workplace or what it feels like you have to compromise in order to get on well in your place of work. Maybe you could ask God to help you align your worship and your work. Maybe you connect and associate with Naomi and you are in despair. This unfamiliar times leaves you despairing. Or maybe there's something to remember about who God is. Maybe there's a, a Boaz in your life. Certainly he would want to be your redeemer. God wants to be our redeemer. And if you've never had a relationship with God, and you find yourself just stuck and desperate like Naomi. Well, my encouragement to you is there is a redeemer. There is someone who wants to make sure that you are fed in every aspect, that you have life and life to the full. Um, shortly after this, if you are new to faith or exploring faith, we've got a Just Wondering Zoom that you can click on uh, and we can explore more about what that means. We'd love you to join us. But maybe you're a Ruth. Maybe you're Ruth this morning, <clears throat> and even in your lack or despair, you remember something of the truth from God's word that you can pick up even sheaves. Maybe there's just something about serving and getting on our knees and being determined in the season that will bring about a blessing, particularly as we consider the other and as we consider the poor. I would love for God to be shaping us individually and corporately to know his favor and to create a field where people can find transformation <clears throat> and redemption what a story this is lots more to explore in that uh, i hope you get a chance to do that and um, there'll be some notes for you to uh, to look at for life group leaders um, hopefully you get to check in if you're not in a life group let me really encourage you we need other people around us this story says it God says it, he's designed us to be in fellowship with each other. Um, we need to be wrestling with God's word together for that. Shall we pray? God, I thank you for the richness of this story. Thank you that it is our story. Thank you that you, actually, Jesus, as a foreigner, came from heaven you did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made yourself nothing that you came into our field that you served us even unto death that we could be redeemed thank you for God's favor in our life through the cross through that incredible redemptive work and we pray that you would help us God individually and corporately to be equipped powerfully to be showing your favor to the communities around us help us we pray for the transform ministries we thank you for all the different volunteers who are helping we pray for the different ministries across our town that are looking out for the needs of the vulnerable and the marginalized lord please help us to do that well to do that with dignity and to do that with grace and shape us as a body to serve well, that we would see Naomi's and Ruth's and other individuals, male and female, being restored to whole salvation. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.